Well, the time is upon us for this guitar to move on to its new forever home, but I want to share it with you guys first. What's going on everyone? Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. I hope you're all doing awesome. And yes, the word on the street is true. This instrument is heading home to its new forever home. Heading home to its new forever home? For those of you that have been following along with this build, I've done several videos covering the construction of this instrument, but I did not do a final assembly video. And really the main reason for that is because the customer was not wanting to see certain parts of this build. They wanted to see what I ended up with as the final result. So I didn't share some of that along the way. But now that it's been okayed by the customer and everything seen and inspected, I'm ready to share it with you guys before turning this over to its new owner. So many of you probably know that this body style is based on a Thunderbird bass guitar. This is not my original design. This was at the request of the customer. So that's the reason that I chose to make this shape. So let's cover a few of the specs. Let's start up at the headstock and work our way down. We've got Goto tuners. There's a roller string tree, graph tech nut. This has a 34 inch scale length. We've got a rosewood fretboard, maple, and mahogany laminated neck. Moving down, we've got Lawler T-Bird bass pickups. We've got a three-point bridge here. We've got CTS pots with these cool blue knobs. We've got a mahogany body with a quilted maple top that we've stained with this cool kind of oceany style die. The whole thing is then sealed up with some crystal lac bright tone and wet sanded and buffed to this nice gloss. I'm really proud of the way this instrument came out, but the thing that I'm probably most satisfied with are the fretboard markers. These consist of a thin copper tube glued into the fretboard and then filled with a finely crushed seashell and then all sealed in place. I think it really gives a nice look and kind of makes the inlays pop out a little bit. I tried several different methods to get this seashell inlay to pop and without the tube it just wasn't happening. I used some epoxy, I tried CA glue and I couldn't get it to really pop out. When I saw how the seashell inlay just popped once that brass tube was used, I knew that that was the answer. I'm going to continue to experiment with this in the future. Now I know several people do this already, but I know I'm going to do that a lot more in the future because it just looks so cool. Now, if you guys want to hear how this thing sounds, well, I hate to tell you, I can't help you because I'm a lefty. This is a right-handed instrument. I can't do a whole lot more than just thump around on a couple of notes, but I did call on my buddy Jesse, who you've seen in other videos, to give this thing a rundown. So let's check out how this bass and these Lawler pickups sound. give a huge shout out to Jesse for test driving this thing for me. Thanks man, I really appreciate it. You do it much more justice than me just fumbling around with a couple of strings. If you guys are interested in hearing a little bit longer demo, head over to HaleyGuitars.com. You can watch the video on the website or the Haley Guitars YouTube channel. It'll be posted in both places, a little bit longer length and a little more in depth. And there we have it. We've covered some of the specs, a little overview of the instrument and a short sound demo. That's a wrap, as they say in the industry. This one is now ready to move on to its new home. 
Thankfully, it's staying local, so I'll be able to visit it once in a while if I need to. Thanks to all of you that followed along with this build. I really appreciate your support. I'm really happy with the way this instrument turned out. Ready to move on to the next one. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, oh, oh.